We're going to talk about what platforms you can stream to, how you can actually stream to those platforms, some tips about streaming, and then what gear you'll need to consider. And if you are in the market for gear, whether it's for live streaming, for recording, or for anything in between, head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, G-E-A-R, and my complete gear guide is there. So if you want to know all the stuff that I use for my live streaming setup, for my home and mobile recording setup, jump over to the website. Let's jump in though. What platforms can you stream to? These days, pretty much anything. So I'm streaming on YouTube and Facebook, and I'm using a platform called StreamYard. We'll talk about that in a moment. You can also stream to Instagram. You can stream to TikTok. You can stream to Periscope. You can stream to LinkedIn these days. Basically, any social media platform, any media engagement platform is going to enable you to stream live. Different platforms have different rules and things around them. For instance, YouTube, you can only stream from your mobile device if you have 1,000 or more subscribers. However, you can stream from a Mac or a PC regardless of how many subscribers that you have. Other platforms like Facebook, as I mentioned, is super simple to stream to. Same with Instagram. Literally open the app and then hit the go live button and you're live. You can do it on your desktop as well directly from your browser. So there's a heap of ways that you can go live and you can stream to multiple people. You can even use some platforms to stream with other people. You'd be aware that a lot of people are using Zoom, Google Hangouts, other things at the moment. If you want a private stream, you can set something like that up as well. But we'll be focusing more on when you want to stream your music, stream your content out to the world. So how do you go about it? Well, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. You can either use the native app. So if you've got an app on your phone or your tablet, if you've got the, the website, you can go directly to facebook.com and hit the live button. So you can do it from the native app. You can also do it from, as I said, mobile or from your desktop. You can use cloud software. Now, this is my preference at the moment. I use this platform that you're seeing right now. This is called StreamYard, and it allows you to stream with up to six people at a time. You can screen share. You can stream out for the free version. You can stream to one location up to 40 hours per month, I think. And the paid version, you can stream to multiple locations. You get good quality streaming. You get good quality uh, video and audio, and you get the interactive features. So the comments will pop up. You'll be able to throw comments on the screen. You can do all sorts of cool things. So I can put a comment up. If you're watching the video, I can put this com comment up here from Jade saying, if you have questions, just add question at the beginning. And it just creates a really good interactive experience for you and for your viewers. So that is, a, that is my recommendation. There's other different cloud software as well. The other thing you can do is use either apps on your phone. So Streamlabs is an app on your phone that can help you with your streaming or something like OBS, Open Broadcaster Software on your Mac or PC can really help you bring different scenes together, different audio and video sources that you can actually present on your live stream. Last but not least, uh, sorry, no, third, but definitely not least, uh, what about some tips about streaming? My number one tip is to keep it short and on point. When you're starting out, there can be a real sort of a desire to just hit the live button and start talking. Now, that's okay, but at least maybe have one or two topics that you're going to cover. If you just hit live and you start talking, you may do like an hour-long live stream and it won't really have any sort of significant focus. And that can be challenging because the whole point of live streaming is you want to share something poignant, share something emotional, share something fun with the rest of the world. So keeping it short when you're starting out to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that can be a great plan. Have a plan or outline. So know what you're going to talk about. You don't need a script by any stretch, but at least have a few dot points like I have right here now. Have some dot points to keep you on track. Otherwise, again, if you're like me and you like to ramble and talk, you're going to go on probably too long. Try to avoid dead air. So the other things I've talked about will help you with that. If you have a lot of dead air where you're just there reading comments and it's silent for 10 seconds, that's going to be disengaging. And when interacting, when someone is commenting on your live stream, make sure that you are actually putting the comment out there. So I can say, oh, James, James Arell's here in the house. He said, hello, Pete. Hi, James. Hope you're doing well. If I'm just reading that comment, which I've just popped on the screen for those on the audio version, then it's not going to be as engaging because you want to, and this is the last tip, you want to make sure that there is replay value. 
in your live stream. So you want to make sure that once you put your stream out there, it's not just for the people watching. Because here's the thing, the stats are in. About 10 times as many people generally, sometimes 20 times, sometimes 50 times, will actually watch the replay of your live stream compared to the actual live stream. We're conditioned these days to watch on demand. So when you're putting out a live stream, don't just think about the people that are watching at the time. Think about the people that may be watching in the future and how your stream is going to engage with those people. Last but not least, let's talk gear. Now, if you're using your phone, you can literally just use the built-in mic and camera on your phone. You need zero gear to get started. What I would recommend, though, is getting yourself some sort of headset. I just use this. It's the JBL Endurance Run. This is, again, it's linked at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. Just a very affordable, about a $20 headset with a good quality microphone, in-ear earbuds. Just means you're not going to get a whole lot of feedback and things going on when you're live streaming. And you can plug this into your Mac or PC as well. So this is super universal, super handy to have. If you're looking to up your audio and video game, you can then move into buying some more gear. So a USB microphone is a good option. I use the, the Samson Meteor. You can use the U, uh, the Blue Yeti. It's a very popular streaming mic. Check out those, uh, again, over at the Gear Guide. You can use a, a headset, like any USB headset, or you can go the whole hog and do what I do. Use headphones, use a mixer, use an XLR microphone and an audio interface or a mixer. So... You can basically level yourself up. You can literally start today, hit the record button and do your first live stream, do five minutes about whatever and get started. As I say with music, if you don't know where to start, just start. But again, take those tips on board, have a plan, have an outline, talk about something that you're interested in, your passion will flow through and you will find other people that share your passion. There are people right here now that share my passion for home studio and mobile studio recording that are here watching this live show. So other people will engage with you if you follow some of those simple advice and tips with your live streaming.